Hey folks, Comedy Zola, in-depth reviews of comedy from a writer's perspective. Bill Burr was on Saturday Night Live this weekend. I have not had a chance to take a look at it yet. Let's have a look and see how he did. Yes, nice to be here on such a fun week. All right, great start. Um, just calling out that everybody's either elated or in a terrible mood <laughs> because of uh, the election. I think that's a great, you know, it's not an I know I look like, but it's like a... It's like a global I know I look like. Like, I know that you're all feeling this, so I got to call it out. That's that's uh, that's what a good stand-up does. I don't want to hear it. I don't watch politics, so we're going to keep it light. I'm not sure if that was meant to be... Um, I'm not sure if he was expecting a laugh there. I don't watch politics. Hard to say. Hard to say. Let's keep going. You know, just going through this Rolodex of people that coughed on you, sniffled near you, walked by an Asian or something. So we start the joke with, um, I had the flu... And then we immediately shift to, I had COVID, and then now we're making the leap to, so it's like flu COVID Asians. Um, and I mean, I know that, like, people say that it came from China, but does that, uh, that feels like a left field to me, like a, honestly, that felt to me like a shot out of left field at Asians. I'm not quite sure why we needed that. That feels like, um, I don't know. I didn't dig it. Whatever the next disease is, you know? So... Okay, so that that felt like the end of that chunk. I don't know because I haven't watched the next you know joke, but that felt like a uh, patient number two was supposed to be the close of that chunk, and it didn't. He didn't seem to really be um, didn't seem to be really gaining momentum at this point. I mean, like um, I I think part of it could be that people are still sick of COVID material, so it's like. Uh, right now, my feeling is uh, Burr is starting this video by saying, I don't want to talk about politics because I know that's what's, every what's on everyone's mind. So we're going to forget about that. But then he goes back to the thing that everybody was sick of talking about before this, which was COVID. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Burr's had a lot more success than I have. I, you know, he's a pro, but uh, I don't know about that. Like one mouth breathing moron after another. <laughs> Yet we still go to church on Sunday. And what do we do? We praise him. When is the constructive criticism coming? Like, dude, when's the last time you made a Gandhi? For somebody as accomplished as Burr, it's like, this feels very, um, very off the cuff. Like, this material is all brand new. I don't know the story behind how he got the gig. I mean, you know, like, if he was called this week and he was like, well, I don't have anything or, you know, I just shot a special and I don't have any material. So, I mean, but, but Burr does this all the time. I mean, he has his podcast that he does all the time he says all that stuff off the cuff so i'm i find it hard to believe that he doesn't have material in his pocket i mean how long is this going to be 10 minutes maybe i mean like I, I feel like i feel certain that bill burr is capable of doing a funny 10 minutes pretty much off the cuff but for some reason this is not i, I don't know I, i'm i'm wondering if he got a bunch of notes like like we need you to do it we need you last minute but you can't talk about these things and so he was like, well, I have a ton of material in my pocket, but none of it that meets these criteria. I, I, I don't know. But I, I, I mean, he's so funny and he's got so much experience. I would feel like somebody at his level would be able to overcome that. But but what I'm seeing right now is a guy who doesn't seem that put together, especially for, you know, as highly regarded as as Burr is. I also was not aware that Burr was a really churchy guy. Now, I'm not um, I'm not a super huge uh, Bill Burr fan. But it was kind of a surprise to me to hear him saying, like, so what do we do? We go to church. And like, do we, Bill? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I know he's like, I don't know. I, I, I didn't know that he was a churchy guy. I mean, you know, if you are, whatever. But uh, that's a new element to his comedy for me. All right, let's get to what you all want to talk about. All right, ladies, you're 0-2 against this guy. Not sure if they're really 0-2. Um, I think my understanding of the data is a lot of women did vote for Trump. Um, so, yeah. Women are not the only people who vote, so I'm not sure that it's squarely on them. I think there are also people known as men who, you know, whatever. Swing a state over a little bit. Some of these turns of phrase, I think, are uh, funny, like, um, you know, a swing a state over. That's a, you know, he could have just said, watch Fox News a little bit or something like that. But swing a state over as a way to say that, pretty inventive. It never hurts when you're l l watching yourself right. And you you see yourself about to use something that's a cliche or of some series of words, like any any series of three or four words where a person could guess the third word. Some friends and I just went to see Jeff R. Curry uh, a couple of days ago, and one of a part of his set is he's talking about things that old people say. That's how they get you. So a phrase like "That's how they get you." If you're about to say that, 
you know that anybody listening can guess that the last word is going to be yeah. So if you can, if you can hear yourself about to say that and then find a different way to say that, I think there's a lot of value in that. And I think, you know, this is what a, a somebody who talks for a living as long as Burr knows how to do to say swing a state over rather than just, you know, whatever else anybody else would say. So I appreciate that turn of phrase. There was nothing you could say, right? Everybody would just be like, this guy's the man. He is. What is, what is Burr doing with the hand thing? What I, I'm, I'm not. You know, I'm not somebody who pays a ton of attention to his work, but I've never seen this uh, mic rolling thing. Um, I had a teacher that used to do that. She would hold the chalk in her hand and she would roll the chalk in her hands like that. But because she was she was wearing a ring on both, on, like both her hands had rings on them. So the chalk would go click, click, click. <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking while I'm watching Bert do this. I realized we didn't all have the same teachers that I did, of course. I mean, he literally got shot and immediately jumped back up and started yelling in the direction the bullets were coming from. <laughs> unarmed. My issue with this is that we've heard Twitter and everybody say all these things a million times. Um, we are not watching Twitter right now. We're watching Bill Burr. And it's just really weird to me. This comes, I mean, I feel like I say this a lot. And I, 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 uh, I honestly don't, I do not wake up in the morning and say to myself, today is the day that I become a really, really wet blanket. But, you know, I, I, I expect more from Burr. I mean, uh, this, this stuff it has been all, you know, you, you go on any Twitter or Reddit thread, you can read all of these jokes. So he's like, oh my God. This, this is like where they make the french fries. And he was sticking a couple of extra in one. He goes, hey, whoever gets this one's going to be excited. It's like, oh my God, was that empathy? Of the people, Donald? This feels like we're back on track a little bit. I mean, uh, uh, suggesting that it's empathy and that that's the kind of empathy that Donald Trump would have thinking about the way that somebody else would feel about extra fries. Not bad. That's not bad. I don't know where this kind of thing was a minute ago in the set, but, uh, you know, it's here now. So, last chunk about Shaquille O'Neal. I thought when he was selling Buicks, that was the end of it. It blows my mind. Doesn't he even have like a billion dollars at this point? It's like, why are you still working? Take a weekend off, you nine-foot whore. Give somebody else a chance. I know who Shaquille O'Neal is. Uh, he's been famous for a long time. I think that's part of Burr's joke. Uh, you know, I don't really watch ads, so I don't know how common it is for people to be annoyed with Shaquille O'Neal for trying to sell printer ink. But, uh... You know, I was thinking as he started the chunk, OK, here we go with some sort of evergreen material. It's not truly evergreen since, we, you know, we need to know who Shaquille O'Neal is and we need to know that he's giant. But, you know, a lot of people do know who Shaquille O'Neal is, of course, and they do know that he's a he's a tall guy. Uh, give it a rest, you nine foot whore. As, uh, I don't know. OK, but. But you're working, Bill. I mean, you've been in the game a long time. You're on SNL. I mean, I don't know if it really felt like it had the 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 energy for the last bit, uh, you know, like that. I guess I kind of felt this way also when Chappelle uh, had his uh, he hosted SNL, as I recall, right after Trump won the first time. And uh, he was kind of he was kind of hopeful about it, you know, like the this is just off the top of my head, as I recall. But I, I really feel like in these moments, you have a chance to really say something you have a chance to really say something important. And I feel like, I kind of feel like Burr abdicated that responsibility a little bit. Now, I also don't think that Burr is that kind of guy. You know, I, I, I don't, I'm not super familiar with him, but it, he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who would be like, okay, now I'm going to be historically significant. You know I mean? Like, so I, I'm, it's foolish of me to try to put what I would be thinking into, into Burr's mind, but it just feels like it could have been so much funnier or the guy with Bill's uh, skills to really take a, a big time third path uh, on a lot of the stuff. And I feel like uh, there were some kind of shots in both directions, but I don't, I'm not sure that they, I don't know. I feel like they maybe weren't quite up to snuff. I mean, orange bigot didn't really hit. Um, uh, real estate agent who talks through their nose. It's not really, I don't know. I guess my closing sort of conclusion is that it feels like a little bit of a missed opportunity, but again, we don't know what the constraints were. We don't know if he was handed a list of things that he can't say, or the whole thing was like, Hey, I want you to come and host SNL, but please don't talk about these topics here because we think the audience is blah, blah, blah. You know, 
Um, so who knows what kind of restrictions there were like that. But uh, yeah, feels felt a little bit like a missed opportunity. I would have liked to see Burr really, really mix it up with some stuff that really landed hard, even if it went against where or, you know, where I personally am, just because I think I just think Burr is the kind of guy who's got the ability to really strike at the heart of things. And whether you agree with the direction that he's going with his comments or not, I want to see him, you know, take big swings and get big laughs. You know, I want to hear when Burr's on stage, I want to hear half the audience really laughing and the other half really crying, <laughs> you know, like that, that is, um, that's what I want to see from him. And, and I'm not sure that, I'm not sure that he really executed that this time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe and maybe jump on the Patreon if you want to help me make more. And if you want to talk about comedy writing with people who are trying to do it in a constructive way, we also have a Discord channel.